Welcome to Explore York Libraries and Archives. This film has been created by community groups in York to help you identify, manage and use your community archive. In this video, we're going to look at what digital records are, the formats you can store your records in, how you name those files and look at the basics of social media. So first of all, what are digital records? The most important thing to remember about digital records is it's anything that is born digital. So anything that was originally created in a digital format and stays that way. Digital records include your text files and any audio and visual material that you may create. There are various different places you can store your digital records, so it's really important to know the pros and cons of each of these. There are three main places you can store your digital records. The first is your hard drive on your home PC. The second is thinking about external storage, such as external hard drives and USB sticks. Uh, I've heard that external storage doesn't last very long. That's a really good point. External storage is a short-term solution, so it's really important to bear in mind that it does have a shelf life. So, for example, USB sticks last between 1 to 10 years, hard drives 2 to 8 years, and CDs, DVDs or Blu-rays roughly 2 to 10 years. Your third option is cloud storage, so that's storing material online, and this acts as a great backup to your hard drive on your computer. What about cost? There are a lot of free cloud storage options, but if you do have a lot of records, you may need to think about purchasing additional storage space because you'll only get a limited amount of storage free. Remember to keep all your versions of digital records updated across at least two different mediums. And make sure that more than one person has access to your digital records because you really don't want to be relying on just one person to manage everything. What format should I store my records in? We recommend that you store your records as a PDF. These are a more static version of the original record and the metadata behind it will store exactly what program it was originally created in. If you have access to the more advanced version of Adobe, which is Adobe Acrobat, then you can store things as a PDF A. So the A means archive, so it basically means that it cannot be altered at all as a version, just making it a safer option for long-term storage. With photographs, we recommend you keep two versions. Keep the larger TIFF file, which is the high quality version, which is perfect for your archives. However, because it is a large file, it can be difficult for providing access. So what we would say is also keep a JPEG version as well. They are a smaller version and great if you need to share documents. In terms of naming your files, Keep your file titles short and easy to understand. Also, make sure that your digital files match the structure of your wider archive collection to keep everything consistent right the way across. The digital world is now heavily reliant on the internet and social media. And social media is a fantastic way of sharing and celebrating your archive collections. Here at Explore York Libraries and Archives, our Digital Inclusion Manager, Liam Wilkinson, is here to talk about social media and answer some of your questions. What is social media? Well, social media is a term that we use to describe a collection of online resources which we can use to discover and share things across the world. So in short, social media is the best way to engage in conversations across the world via the internet. What are the key social media platforms and how can they be used? The most popular social network platforms are the ones which allow you to engage in social networking. 
the most popular being Facebook. With Facebook, you can engage with family, friends, colleagues by posting key information about yourself. You can then add unlimited information about your daily activities whenever you choose. Twitter allows you to post messages of up to 140 characters to what is essentially a global message board. You can then link these messages together thematically using something called a hashtag. A hashtag is essentially a word or a phrase which links messages together with a theme. Tumblr allows you to create a blog or weblog. On this you can post something as simple as a sentence, uh, a paragraph or even media such as videos and photographs which you can then reblog amongst your friends. What would you say are the pros and cons of using social media? Social media can link you with a lot of people across the world with just a single click. It is important for that very reason to use etiquette and to be aware that what you're posting is going to be seen by many people. It's important to remember that sharing too much and anything that is controversial can of course be dangerous. How can we get further support? Well, as well as the many printed and online resources available which will help you, you can of course come to us at Explore, where we run very many sessions throughout the year on all kinds of digital resources. This includes Pinterest, it also includes Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr of course, and many, many other aspects of the internet. And remember, you can keep an eye on forthcoming events on our website. I don't have much time to use social media, so what's the quickest and easiest to use? The best advice I could give to you is to start with Twitter. Twitter does allow us a way of engaging with social media without putting too much information onto it. So, Whereas Facebook does require quite a lot of information in order to start the social network, Twitter doesn't. You can start playing with Twitter and enjoying information from across the world without giving too much away. It also takes only a few minutes to start.